everyone, it's Stacey. Welcome to Sewing with Stacey Lee. Thank you for joining me and today in this video we'll be making a pocket tissue holder. Now these make a great, simple, quick, easy project. So it's perfect for our first project for my eight week learning to sew course. And I've made a lot of these in the past. I find they're great gifts for teachers. I've even made a basket full for a vow renewal and given them out as handmade keepsakes. So let's get sewing. So for our pocket tissue holder, I want to show you how to make a template to cut our fabric from. And for the projects we're going to be making in the future, we are going to be using our mat ruler and rotary cutter. But making a template is sort of a more of a traditional way of sewing. And I wanted to show you this technique because it is a very useful technique to know how to do. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut a rectangle, which is six inches by seven and a half inches. So all we need to do is take a standard piece of paper and take a ruler and we're going to find six inches on our ruler. I'm going to line that up with the edge of my piece of paper. I've lined it up on the edge here and I'm just going to do a mark for six inches and I'll do that in a few places. And then I'll just join that up. And then we need to measure seven and a half inches from this edge. So I'll find seven and a half inches on my ruler. I'll mark it there and I'll just mark it in a few places just as a cross reference. So now all I need to do is rule that line. What we can do is to make sure it is square is to line up a line in our ruler with the line we drew and a line on our ruler on the edge of the paper and then of course the line we drew so I'll draw that line now we've got our six by seven and a half inches I'm just going to cut that of course if you've got a mat ruler and rotary cutter and you're happy to use that and know how to use it of course you could go ahead and use that but like I said, I think this is a nice little technique to know how to do. So one thing I like to do is also label my template. So I will write on here, pocket tissue holder. And now I know in the future, I'll put this away and I've always got it. So now what we need to do is get our fabric that we're going to use. So now I've got my fabric, I'm actually going to use a couple of scrap pieces of fabric and I'm going to use this for my good side and this for the inside. You might be using the same fabric and that's perfectly fine. I just wanted to use up some scrap fabric and I have given my fabric a press because if it's all wrinkly, it's just hard to work with. So please give your fabric a quick press. And then what we need to do is make sure the good sides of the fabric are facing each other. So this is my good side because this is a side with my pretty little random polka dots and on this side I can barely see my print. So this is the wrong side of the fabric and this is the right side of the fabric. Now if this fabric here was also a pattern I'd need to make sure the right side was facing me. So if I was using the same fabric the pretty polka dots would be facing me and then I take this right side of the fabric and place it down. So we've got the right sides of the fabric facing each other. Then we're going to take our template and we're going to place it on top. Now it's important that the fabric is bigger than the template because we're going to cut around the edges. So for example, it would be no good if our template was down here because our fabric was only this big because we're missing half of the template, which is the shape of the fabric we need to cut. So we need to make sure we've got room around all the edges to cut it nicely. And my one is perfect. Then I'm going to take some pins and I'm going to pin it in place. I'm going to pin all my corners. And then I'll probably pin these sides because they're a little bit longer than these sides. And 
And then once we've pinned it in place, we're going to trim the edges of our fabric along the edges of our template. And I am using my fabric scissors. I don't know if you noticed when I cut my template, but I was using paper scissors. So now we use our fabric scissors and I'm just going to carefully cut along the edge of my template. You might find it easier to hold it down on the table so these edges aren't sort of falling down. Okay, so now we've cut out our template for our pocket tissue holder. And if I turn it over, you can see that my fabric is now the exact same size as my template. So what I'm gonna do is carefully take those pins out I'm going to take my template away, I'm going to leave my fabric here and now what we're going to do is we're going to sew down both of the shorter sides, so down the 6 inch sides. What I will do is I'll put my pins in, making sure the corners and the edges are lined up, but because of the way we just cut it, we know ours are perfect. And you can never use too many pins especially when you're starting out. So then I'm gonna turn it around and I'll put pins on this side. I always put them in both the corners and then I do the middle. And now we're ready to sew. And like I said, we're sewing down these two sides. So now we're going to sew and I'm going to sew at 3 eighths of an inch and that might be something you want to practice and check that you know where that is on your sewing machine before you get to this point. You can always sew and use a ruler to measure and what we're going to do is I'm sewing at stitch length 2.5 which is the standard stitch length for general day to day sewing but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start right on the edge of my fabric. I'm going to put my foot down. And it doesn't matter if I'm putting my foot down on my pin, it just matters that I don't sew over it. So don't worry too much about your pins at this point. So I'm just going to start right at the beginning of my fabric and I'm going to do two to three stitches. One, two, three. And then I'm going to go back stitch right to the edge and then we'll go forward. And now I can pull my pins out and when I'm using pins I always put them on my pin caddy. We don't want them anywhere loose. It's much safer to always take them out and put them straight on your caddy. Now I'm going to sew all the way to the very edge and I'm keeping an eye on the edge of my foot and the edge of my fabric because that's the guide I know I need to use for my sewing machine to get that 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. I'm going to go nice and slowly because I know that's how I'll get my straightest stitch. So I don't take my needles out until I come right up to them. Remembering it doesn't matter if your foot goes over them, we just don't want our needle going over them. Now I can pause. Don't forget you can always pause at any time. And now I'll pull that needle out, put it on my pin caddy and I'll carry on to the edge and then we'll do our reverse stitch. And we can go as slow as we need to. There's no rush. I'm gonna back stitch. And then I'm gonna go forward. And then when I'm finished, I'm gonna turn my hand wheel towards me to lift my needle up. I'm gonna lift my foot up. And I'm gonna pull up, pull out my sewing and cut it on my cutter, or I could use scissors if I'd like to. Now we've sewn our first stitch. We're going to come to the other side and do exactly the same. So I'm putting my fabric underneath my foot, lining it up so I'll start sewing exactly where my edge of my fabric is. I'll put my foot down. I'm not going to worry about my pin because I'm still quite a way away from it. I'll begin sewing, then I'm going to do a back stitch, and then I'll go forward. And now I'll move my pin out and I'm going to pop that on my pin caddy and I'm going to come all the way to the end and then do back stitch again. 
Remembering I'm lining up the edge of my fabric with the edge of my foot because that's the guide I've chosen. And I'm going nice and slow and I'm not watching that needle. It's really tempting to watch the needle, but we don't watch the needle, we watch our guides. Now I'm gonna take this needle out, pop it in my pin caddy and carry on. I'm gonna pull this last pin out. So right to the edge and then do my back stitch again and then sew forward. Turn my hand wheel towards me to lift my needle up, lift my foot up, pull my fabric out and cut it on my cutter. Now I've finished sewing both of those sides. Now it's time to give it a press with the iron. So now we've got the two pieces that we sewed together. What we're going to do is we're going to turn them inside out or right side out rather. So we've got the right side of the fabric facing us again and that's how we need to press it. So what we need to do is we need to really carefully open up this. I kind of roll it so we don't have any creases in there and then we press it. And when we're pressing fabric that we're sewing, we press it rather than iron. And what that means is we just bring it down and we press and we bring it up. We're not vigorously ironing it because if we did that, we'd pull our fabric out of place. So now I'm gonna to come to the other side. I'm just gonna roll these seams so they're nice and flat. Finger press them down and then give them a press. And now what we're going to do is measure our fold and sew these two ends and we're done. So if we have these long loose threads, we do just give them a trim so that our sewing is nice and tidy. There's a few there. Always just trim off those loose threads just so it is nice and tidy. So now we need to fold our pocket tissue holder into the shape that we need it to be in. And we want the fabric to be facing us that we want to be on the outside of the tissue holder. And the fabric that we want to be the inside of the holder is facing down. So this is a fabric I want to be showing. So that's facing me. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take one side and fold it up and we want to fold it at one and a half inches. So I'm going to take my tape measure and I'm going to measure it on this side. One and a half inches and then I'll give it a bit of a finger press and then we'll measure it on this side. Because you'd be amazed at how you could accidentally get that crooked if you didn't measure both sides. So this one is also at one and a half. So we want both sides to be one and a half inches and then we'll carefully turn that around and then we're going to fold this side up and over so that now the whole piece measures three inches and we're lining up all the edges so I'll place this on top it's a little bit shy of three inches so I'll bring that down and that's about right and then I'll measure on this side and that's about right. So if I'm happy and all my edges look like they're lined up nicely, I'll pin that in place. So I'll put one pin there, another here, and I'll do that on the other side. And now what we're going to do is we're going to sew down both sides that we just pinned. So now I'm going to sew down this edge and again I'm sewing at 3 8 of an inch and I know that means I need to line the edge of my fabric up with the edge of my foot. So I'm going to place my tissue holder underneath my foot and I'm going to start sewing just at the edge of the fabric. I'll put my foot down and I'll begin sewing and then I'll do back stitch right to the edge and then I'll carry on forward and then I'll take my pins out as I come to them and I'll pop them on my caddy. I'm going nice and slow and I'm following that edge coming up to my next pin and I'm going to remove that one 
And now I'm coming up to the edge. I'm going to come right up to the edge and then I'll backstitch. And then I'll go forward. And then I'll stop. I'll lift my foot up, turn my hand wheel towards me so my needle is out. Pull out my fabric and cut it on my cutter. That's that side done. Now I'll do this side exactly the same way. Except this time we just need to be careful that this little flap is going to stay down as we're sewing over it. Put my foot down. And don't forget, if you're worried about that little flap, you can always pause at any time and readjust. You can even lift your foot up if you need to, to get right in there and fix anything that's sort of come out of place. Don't be afraid to stop and lift that foot if you need to. Just make sure your needle is down when you do that so it doesn't move out of place. And then I'll take that pin out. Coming up to our last edge, I'll come right up to the edge and then I'm back stitching and then going forward. Lift my foot up, turn my hand wheel towards me to lift my needle up, pull my fabric out and cut it on my cutter. And now we're nearly done. So I'll just move my sewing machine out of the way. The last thing we need to do is cut off these loose threads. And we can cut them very closely to our sewing because we've done the back stitching and we know it's nice and secure. You can cut off any of these threads if they're annoying you and you just want it to be super tidy. And what we're going to do is we're just going to cut off this excess here, just on this corner. We're not going to go near our stitches, but it just removes some of the bulk when we turn it right side out. So I'm just going to cut that corner. I'm not anywhere near my stitches. And I'll cut this corner. This corner. And the last one. And then what we do is we turn it in the right way out. And what you could use now is you could use some blunt scissors or you could use a point turner just to push those corners out. And these are all little extra tools that you sort of pick up along the way. They're not necessary, but they do help. And now we've finished our pocket tissue holder. I can take a pack of tissues and then we'll just pop them inside. Sometimes you've got to fiddle around a bit to get them sitting in there nicely. And we're done. Okay, everyone, you've now finished your first project and I hope you enjoyed making that. Remember to take your time and enjoy the process and maybe it's not going to be perfect your first one but that's okay because you're just learning. Perhaps you want to make a couple of them and really practice sewing those straight lines but the most important thing is to have fun and learn to gain confidence with just using your sewing machine. Okay so if you have any questions of course you could ask them below, you could ask them on our Facebook group and our Facebook group is also a great place to share your projects with us all we love celebrating your success if you have a friend that would like to learn to sew please share my course with them and if you've enjoyed this video please remember to like subscribe and leave a comment i really appreciate any love you can give me thank you so much for joining me today and i'll see you next week for our next project thank you for watching my videos if you're enjoying them please like subscribe and leave a comment